So I think one on this weekend. No. All right. I listened, I listened to the governor's COVID talk. I think it was the day before yesterday. They said they were trying to give out testing kits to all the universities that didn't test regularly. I, but I didn't hear if we signed up for that or not. So, Okay, I was hoping that I, I was hoping that we got the equipment that we requested the equipment. The other thing that they said, and I tried to find out more information about it. I was just going to send out an email that they said that they, you know, they were ho hoping to get college students who were home on break because most college students are on an extended break to uh, volunteer to help. So they were looking for, you know, college students to, I guess there's a, a dire need for substitute teachers. And then also, I, I don't know what, uh, helping out with COVID care, I, I, you know, maybe working in hospitals and things like that. Um, but I couldn't find any more information about that either. But if I see anything, I'll, I'll, I don't want you guys just sitting around doing nothing for six weeks. So. Um, <laughs> you don't mind, I'm sure. <laughs> it's just informational. I'll send out the link, whether whether you guys do anything with with that or not. But if you hear anything about testing, um, everyone, all the students before you go home, you know, let me know because I think that would be that would be wise. Okay, um, the last topic I uh, want to talk about here actually is MRE transmission. And, and this is used now commonly. I mean, we, we focused on the, the, the uh, binary case, but MRE is more common with, with modern digital communications. You can get a higher binary rate for a given transmission bandwidth. Again, it's um, you're sending out in one symbol or pulse multiple bits simultaneously. Now, typically, you know, if you're operating at the same power as uh, the binary case, um, you're not going to have as good of performance, meaning that you'll have a, a higher bit error rate. But it does allow you to trade off power with increased power. You can achieve desired low bit error rates, but much higher transmission, transmission speeds, binary rates for, for a given transmission bandwidth. Uh, so, so just, and we'll look at different ways of doing this. So, um, but just some summary formulas. The symbol duration is M times the bit duration, because now we're wrapping up uh, M bits in uh, a, a single symbol. And we'll have M equal 2M symbols. So for three bits, little m, we need eight different, you know, we've talked about primarily eight different amplitude levels. We'll see today, it might be eight different frequencies or eight different phase angles. Um, but the advantage is, the binary rate is M times the symbol rate, okay? And the symbol rate is typically determined by your transmission bandwidth. So th the other, you know, R equal one over T is the what's called the baud rate. And that's the rate at which the symbol changes. So a lot of people will, you know, equate baud rate and binary rate, and they are the same for binary transmission. 
But if you're doing M area transmission, the baud rate is the rate at which the symbols change. And if you've got three bits per symbol, the binary rate then would be, you know, three times the, the baud rate. Okay. But assuming our, our transmission bandwidth, well, usually it's a transmission bandwidth that's fixed, and then that determines our symbol duration T, right? Um, is equal to two with one over T being uh, R, then our binary rate is 2M times our transmission bandwidth. So, you know, in the, in, for binary, you know, with a 10 kilohertz bandwidth, we can get a 20 kilohertz binary rate. But with m -ary transmission, you know, three bits, we could effect effectively get on that same transmission bandwidth, we could effectively get a 60 kilobit per second binary transmission rate as opposed to, uh, as opposed to 20 kilobits per second. So a tremendous advantage in terms of speed using MRE signaling. Okay. So look, I'll look, we'll look at, you know, MRE amplitude shift keying is, is relatively straightforward. Again, it's, it's not easy now detecting between you know, four different amplitudes or eight different amplitudes at the receiver compared to two amplitudes, you know, just a high and a low. That's just a single comparator. It's, it's um, amplitude shift, different amplitude levels are used in some of these techniques in particular with, with different phase angles uh, to get for MRE signaling. And we'll, we'll look at that, okay. But an MRE, phase shift keying, we essentially use capital M phase angles, you know, spread around the unit circle. Okay. So there's, you know, with three bits, eight symbols, eight different phase angles. Okay. Now it's actually more, uh, convenient to use a trig identity here to express this as in the following form, AI, um, P1 of T plus BI, Phi2 of T. And this is actually just from a trig identity where Phi1 is, we're gonna break it apart like this, square root of 2T, it's the cosine two pi F C of T and phi two of T is square root of two T sine of two pi F C of T. That's just, you know, breaking again, it's just a simple trig identity for the cosine of, uh, of two angles. And then the, the A1 or the AI would be square square root of E and then cosine of two pi M I. That's just the angle part. And B I is square root of E. Actually it's minus square root of E sine of two pi M I. And that, again, that's, that's nothing more than Cosine of A plus B would be, what do I have here? Cosine, it's equal to cosine of A, cosine um, with a different angles. And then it looks like minus sine of A, sine of B. But writing it this way, so these, sim these symbols are always the same, actually. These, these are sinusoids, okay, at our carrier frequency. 
the, the amplitudes change depending on these two amplitudes that are multiplied by these uh, carriers depend on the particular um, phase angles. Um, it can represent our different symbols graphically like this. We can represent SFT on what's known as a signal space or constellation diagram. Where I'll take the case M is equal to eight. So we'll have eight different symbols. And then we just actually plot the AI and the BI components that are multiplying the phi I and phi two. And what you end up here, you know, if you take capital M is equal to eight and let I go from um, uh, zero around zero through seven, you end up with one point, you know, right here that, that corresponds to, you know, A1 equal to one and then B1 equal to zero. Or I guess if we start at zero, A0 equal to one and B0 equal to zero. Then the next point would be halfway between here. We end up with eight points on the unit circle. Again, these are just the AI and BI components. AI is the distance along the, the the uh, V1 axis and BI is the distance along the, the V2 or vertical axis. Okay. So you just plug in the, the numbers here. The numbers, the numbers are either uh, zero, one over square root of two or one all times square root of E. So you just plot those eight points. These are really just, it's really just the phasor representation. That, that may be an easier, actually it's not on the unit circle. It has a square root of, square root of E. It's really just the phasor representation um, of this waveform because in the phasor representation it have a length of square root of E and then this phase angle and that's, another way to think about this constellation diagram. It's just a representation of the eight different phasers that would result from, from the eight different phase angles. Okay. Now, typically the way you, you could assign the bits in, in any, ma any manner, but typically you would use what's known as a, a gray code assignment so that there's only a one bit difference between adjacent symbols. And the reason for doing this, and we'll talk about the receiver, but at the receiver, we have to try to detect the phase angle or equivalently what we'll actually end up detecting are the A1 and, and B1 values or AI and BI values. For example, you know, if we detect an AI, AI is one and BI is zero, that means we're right here at this point. If we detect AI is minus one and BI is zero, we're at this point. If AI is uh, minus one over square root of two or square root of E divided by square root of two and BI is square root of E uh, plus square root of E uh, over square root of two, we're at this point, okay. So, and we'll see how, we'll see how that works, but typically um, when, we, when we do the statistical analysis, you know, we're gonna make errors. And if we make an error here in, in misidentifying, you know, this point, this AI and BI value, we're more likely to identify, mis uh, label it as an adjacent point. Okay. Now, if we do that, you know, at first thought, you might think, well, if, if I don't get the right AI and BI, I've missed all three bits. I've got an error in all three bits. But with this gray code assignment, 
you'll see if it's 101 and I miss here, I still got two bits correct, I got one and zero correct, and I just got an error in the third bit. And similarly here, if I make a mistake here, I got the last two bits correct. So even though I misidentified the symbol, I didn't get by this clever gray code assignment, I didn't make a mistake on all three bits. Okay. So again, there's an advantage to doing that. Now, this expression also allows us to come up with a form for actually generating this MRE PSK. So actually, now I'm going to use these three bits. And based on the three bit values, I'm going to choose my AI and BI. And, and again, really it's nothing more than, you know, having some sort of lookup table would typically be the way it's implemented. You know, if it's using this, if it's, if it's the one, one case, you know, again, my, my, this would be the square root of E zero for uh, AI and BI. This would be the square root of E over the square root of two and square root of E over the square root of two would be this point, right? Um, just using uh, simple trigon trigonometry. This point would be minus one, minus square root of E zero. Okay. So, you know, if it's a zero, zero, one, may, my AI is going to be minus square root of E my bi would be zero in that case. And then I have my uh, sinusoidal oscillator generating uh, write it this way, square root of two t cosine of two pi f c of t. And I see that my ai is directly multiplying that. For my BI, I need to shift it by uh, 90 degrees, shift my cosine by 90 degrees to get my sine wave. And then that multiplies my BI components. Okay. So it's a narrow band phase shifter. I actually need to shift it cosine 90 degrees to the right. So it's a negative 90 degree phase shift. Okay. And then I have to add these two together to get my MPSK signal. So this is my MPSK generator. Let me put under here, you know, the, the AI values are either zero plus or minus square root of E over two um, and plus or minus square root of E and the same for the BI, zero plus or minus square root of E over two plus or minus square root of E. So those eight points would map to the, those eight values. Okay. Now, what do we have to do on the receiver? Well, again, always a good, if you're trying to develop a receiver, always a good choice is you know, start with the synchronous uh, receiver. And we have to use that here with MPSK. Um, so, and we're actually trying to detect these AI and BI cosine two pi F C of T, and then getting the 90 degree phase shift to get our sine. And we integrate that over a symbol interval. We'll talk about that in just a second. And then we 
sample that to determine our AI and BI values. And this would be sampled at, a, at our symbol rate. Um, and then based on our AI and BI values, we recover an approximation to our original bit stream. So for every AI and BI pair, we get out three, three bits. Okay. So what's, what's going on here with the, the, rec the receiver? How, do, how does this work? SI of T times square root of two T cosine two pi FC of T. And it, it's based on just a simple trig identity. I erased the formula we had for SI of T here in terms of um, my AI and, and BI. But um, if you expand that trig identity, you know, for cosine times cosine, we've looked at that a lot. You get cosine of the difference. So I'd get it, I get this uh, DC term. Okay. And then I'd get AI over T cosine of two pi two FC of T. And, but then I also have this cosine times, remember SI had a BI sine term. Okay. That gives, when you expand the, the sine cosine, you get um, sine of the difference, but if the frequencies are the same, you get sine of zero or zero plus sine of the sum, bi of, so sine of two pi, two f c of t. And, and similarly, along the bottom path where we're multiplying by a sine, you get bi of t plus ai of t sine of two pi two fc of t plus bi of t cosine of two pi two fc of t, okay. And so if we integrate these over the symbol interval T, you know, here we get our AI and BI values out. These cosine terms, equivalently, you can think of it as, as just low pass filtering um, to eliminate these high frequency terms. Um, and then they, they would be eliminated by this integrator or low pass filter. And then so we then sample to get the AI and BI. And there are eight possible combinations for the AI and BI. And then based on those, I generate the corresponding three bits for every symbol. And, um, and the presence of noise, of course, you know, errors are going to occur. Um, the more power, you know, the greater we make our amp, our transmitted amplitude, our energy the, per bit, um, the greater we make the transmitted power, the, the slower the bit error rate. That's all a function of, of the noise level though. Okay. Now there's, there's a common extension of this and this is this is a this is a commonly used technique in, in modern high speed digital modulated communication. A variant of this is what's called quadrature AM or MCAM. Now <clears throat> where we, mod uh, we transmit not only different phase angles, but different amplitudes as well. And a common arrangement 
is actually this one. Four rows and four columns of in our constellation. And I'm not going to write down all the assignments. But you could do a gray code assignment, okay, to each of these. So there's a, a, a different phase angle, well, and different amplitude for each of these points. Um, you know, the, the AIs now are actually plus or minus, uh, again, uh, I'm just gonna call this uh, one over square root of two, and this distance one. So this would be um, um, if I keep the, the, this distance the same, this is actually, I've got it written down in my notes as three over square root of two. Okay. And then plus or minus three over square root of two would be, so there's four possible values for AI and then similarly four possible values for BI, plus or minus one over square root of two and plus or minus three over square root of two. Again, multiplied by some energy. Because I'm changing amplitudes though, my energy per bit is not the same in all these cases, like when they're on a circle, okay? So I can't just say E is the energy per bit. I could define it in terms of some average energy per bit. So, but MCAM uses both changes in amplitude and phase. Here with, we've got 16 different levels, okay, or 16 different symbols that we're transmitting. Um, course, so four different bits in a, in a single pulse. Okay. Um, the pulses vary in amplitude and phase, and we don't typically try to detect the amplitude and phase directly. The receiver would really be the same as this. We would detect instead the AI-BI pair and then translate that to the corresponding four bits for each of those pairs. Uh, this has been extended. I've seen as much as um, 256 different combinations of phase angles and amplitudes so that in a single pulse, you're transmitting a, an entire byte of information. Okay. Requires a lot of power in order to, to um, uh, get a reasonably low bit error rate though. Um, another MRI FSK, that's a little easier maybe to visualize. This is just n different um, m different frequencies. Notation's a little awkward here, where n is two t f zero. Okay, so with i equal to zero. This is just a, a strange way, I, it's the, the notation from the book, but it's strange with i equal to zero, this becomes uh, uh, two pi f zero, okay? And with i equal to one, it's actually just offset from this. So this is a variant on that minimum shift king. But essentially this is nothing more than, than uh, um, you know, m different frequencies and so for uh, three bits, we would again have use eight different frequencies 
Again, using more bandwidth than actually phase shift keying. Okay. Um, the, the frequencies here are separated by one over two T Hertz. And that's kind of the minimum se separation necessary to make sure that uh, the symbols are, are orthogonal, that when you integrate over the product, you get zero if the symbols are dissimilar. And that helps in the detection process, actually. Okay. Um, again, I'm not gonna talk about the MRE amplitude shift keying. We talked about it a little bit embedded here in phase shift keying but we, we also talked about that with, with respect to, to baseband. Okay. So that's it for the semester. I will post under today's lecture link, a practice exam. So look for that. I've got meetings all day today, so I probably won't get that posted until later tonight. Um, but look for that, try to work through that before class on Monday. We'll review that on Monday look at any questions you might have about homework problems. And then our exam is on Wednesday. Um, bring your text with you to class on Wednesday. Because you, if you remember, you didn't buy those, I loaned those to you. So I need to, I need to get those back so we can use them again next year. So, all right, that's, that's it for today. You can. Well, our last our last exam is today. Okay. If if you still need it for the project, keep it and turn it in when you get the project checked off.